Welcome back you guys. Today as you can see I have a cake all prepared and ready to go here and I'm going to show you how I like to add fresh flowers to my cakes. So I have here a bunch of roses and I'm going to be adding them on top of this cake. And a lot of people get worried about the fluids from the stems that can leach into the frosting or into the cake and that's a very valid concern. So there are a few different things you can do to prevent this and I think that the way that I do it is the easiest but I'm going to show you other methods as well. So the first method that you can do is to wrap your flower stems in floral tape. So this is like a green roll of tape that you can get from most florist shops and you simply wrap it around the stem, kind of pinch it at the end to make sure no liquid from the stems can come out and then you're going to cut it and twist it. And that's going to seal off the stem and allow you to add it onto your cake and not worry about those fluids. The second method it's a little bit more makeshift, but I think it's easier to cut the cake after, clean up, and all that jazz, so I really prefer it. So what I like to do is I simply take a cardboard round that I've cut to just be about the size of the top of my cake. I've cut out a square shape here because this is a square cake. You're going to flip it over so that way the laminated part of the cake, or the greaseproof part, is going to be touching the cake. and. That way, some people get really worried when you put stuff on top of the cake and you're going to eat it. But when you think about it, you eat cake off of a cake board every time you make a cake. So this is pretty much the exact same thing. So by putting the cardboard or the unfinished side up, it's going to be the perfect base for our flowers. So I'm going to pipe frosting literally all around this, and then we're just going to add all of our flowers on top. The reason why I love this so much is because... Once you're done and everyone's enjoyed looking at the cake and it's time to cut in, you can simply take an offset spatula, kind of run it underneath a piece of cardboard and pop the flowers right off. So that way you don't have to worry about picking through flowers or floral tape getting in anyone's pieces of cake. It's just a lot easier and literally makes cutting into the cake with flowers a piece of cake. No pun intended. Another question I get all the time when it comes to adding fresh flowers to cakes are what flowers should I use, what flowers are poisonous, what are edible, and the answer is there isn't really like, that I've been able to find, a really concise or realistic list of flowers that are edible. So I think it's much better to just go to your local flower shop, look and see what's in season, figure out what flowers you think you want to add to a cake, and then just do a quick Google search on the name of each flower to make sure that it's not poisonous. You never want to add anything to your cake that is toxic, so it's important to look that up. With that being said, none of these flowers are actually going to come in contact with the cake, especially with my method of using the cake board to protect the cake. Um, so you really can use most types of flower, flowers. However, I think that it's really great if you can uh, to try to use organic flowers, flowers that aren't treated with pesticides. Sometimes it's hard to know, uh, but I really like to get flowers from Whole Foods where I think everything is organic. So that's kind of an easy win. Or if you have a local florist, you can always ask them as well. So without further ado, you guys, let's get going on this cake. The first step is to take a bit of buttercream and just spread it over the top of the cake. You really only need a thin layer because you still want the cardboard to be easily lifted off the cake, but you do need it to stay in place. So this kind of acts like the glue. I'm taking my cardboard cutout, I'm placing it grease side down on my cake. Once I feel like it's really in place and I've pressed it down a bit, I'm taking some buttercream that's in a piping bag and just outlining the piece of cardboard so that it won't peek through once we add our flowers. Once I completed that outline all the way around the cardboard, I added a ton of frosting on top of this. And the reason I like to add a lot of frosting is just because it really is the centerpiece of what's going to hold all your flowers in place. And for this cake, I had big plans. I wanted to just load up the top with fresh flowers. And in order to keep them all in place, you need quite a bit of frosting. So when you're doing this, you don't have to be as aggressive as I'm being, but you are going to need a bit of extra frosting. So keep that in mind when you're making your frosting for a cake. Um, make a little bit of extra because I think that you always end up using more than you think you will, especially when it comes to this technique. So once my bed of frosting was smoothed and I felt like I really had a good base, I began to add my flowers into the frosting. So I've trimmed my roses and they have about a one inch stem and I find that's a really great length because it's enough to secure it into the frosting and keep it in place. But that way when you're adding them all around the cake, the stems aren't hitting each other and making it hard to really cover the entire top of the cake. So first I start going around the base just by adding roses all around the sides and then I'm going to slowly work my way up towards the center. 
I really love how simple this method is. While wrapping flower stems isn't that time consuming, it is a pain when you're using a bunch of flowers like this. So it's so nice just to be able to snip the stems and place them on your cake and not have to worry about those fluids. To decorate this cake, I ended up using just about two dozen white roses. I also got some small white flowers to kind of fill in between the roses and to give the cake more of a whimsical look. I know it seems really creepy to add frosting on top of your flowers, but doing this kind of in a layering technique really helps keep everything together and in place. It's almost like the nacho approach where you kind of build in layers. Um, I promise it works very well and your flowers will be really locked into place so if you to transport the cake or anything like that, you don't have to worry about anything moving. I have the same advice for flowers as I do for frosting, to always get more than you think you'll need. If you have leftover flowers, you can always make a beautiful bouquet, which is what I enjoy doing, and it's so much better than running out, because when you're decorating a cake, you want the top of it to really be beautiful and lush and full, and you just need a lot of flowers to do that. If you are going to be using larger flowers like roses, I really do recommend getting some kind of greenery or leaves or small flowers to fill in the gaps to make sure that the top of your cake is stunning and beautiful and you don't have any frosting peeking through. So this is one final look at our cake. It really was so fun and playful. I decided to cover the entire top of this cake, but you can do so many different things with this. I'm going to show you guys another cake I did here where I only covered half of the top of the cake, kind of creating almost like a small bouquet off to the side, and it really covered about half of the top of the cake, but it was stunning as well. So don't think that you can't get creative with this method. All right, you guys, so our cake is all ready to go, and as you can see, that is literally the simplest way to add fresh flowers onto a cake. So now it's time to do our taste test. We've got to cut into this, and I'm going to show you the best part of using this method. So to do this, I'm just going to use a large offset spatula. I'm going to carefully find the seam of where the cardboard is on top of the cake, and I'm going to gently lift up with my offset spatula. So you want to have a soft touch as you do this, and just keep in mind you're trying to find that cardboard and carefully lift it up. So I'm going to work this all the way around the cake. I'm going to super carefully lift this up and just place it onto a plate. So now our cake is perfect. She's ready to be cut into and enjoyed. So I've heated up my knife here to get a nice clean cut. And there we have it. A gorgeous piece of perfect white cake. Don't forget you guys, the recipe for this white wedding cake is up on chillsweets.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.